time. Have we unlocked the full potential of coffee? I used to think that coffee varieties were associated to certain flavors only, like jasmine in a geisha or berries in a katura. But when I met Andres Julio Quiseno, farmer and producer of Finca Milan, we understood that we could push the boundaries of coffee further. So last year, we started working together, developing new intentional fermentation that this year achieved unique results, unlocking the full potential of his varieties. After tasting many and many experiments, we finally found the perfect pairing, something that we never had before. And I truly can't wait to share it with all of you today. I'm using two varieties, Geisha and Katura, both coming from Finca Milan, located at 1,700 meters above the sea level on the west side of Colombia, in the Risaralda region. The coffee tree here grows on the west side of Nevado de Ruiz, a volcano whose soil is rich in minerals, giving an amazing complexity to the coffee. The first variety, the green tip geisha, has those classic and elegant floral notes, such as orange blossom today in your espresso. But we wanted to go a step further, developing the texture using intentional fermentation. So for this specific lot, we chose an anaerobic lactic process, fermenting the cherries for 96 hours in open tanks with a lactobacillus. In order to improve the texture, making it thicker, resulting today in silky in your espresso. After that, the cherries are pulped and dried on parabolic dryer at 35 degrees for eight days, improving the sweetness and an incredible flavor of papaya. Now, when I tasted the second variety of today, the Katura, I was amazed, but it's incredible. Refreshing fruitness developed by a new intention of fermentation. So I decided to blend these two coffees together in order to achieve a balanced yet unconventional experience. What we did with this Katura is truly inspiring. But don't worry about that too much. I will talk about it a little bit more later on. For now, for my espresso, I'm using 18 grams of geisha and 2 grams of katura for a total of 20 grams in, 37 grams out. And I'm brewing my espresso at a temperature of 91 degrees in order to have the best balance possible between these two varieties together. The result is going to be, please write that down for me. Medium body with a silky mouthfeel. Regarding the flavor, you will have orange blossom straight away from the geisha. With cantaloupe and watermelon from the katura. And then the geisha will be back with some papaya. And a tea-like aftertaste reminding of Earl Grey. The acidity is medium and citric. The sweetness is medium-high and candy-like. And the bitterness is low. Now, once you serve it espresso, please evaluate visually the crema, but don't drink it just yet and wait for my instruction. As you can see in front of you, you have a very special cup that, with this shape, is going to enhance and unlock your senses, helping you focus on the tasting experience. So in a couple of seconds, I'm going to ask you to have two sips both of them from the deepest part of the cup, in order to help your nose capturing the whole aromatic compounds, OK? So now espresso has cooled down 45 seconds. I'm going to ask you to take the spoon you have on your right, stir five times, and then you can place it back where you found it. Go ahead and enjoy the espresso.
All right, you guys ready? Let's go to the second course. Let's move on to this to the milk beverage. Shall we? Yeah. All right. So for my milk beverage, I want to in, uh, decrease the amount of geisha and increase the amount of katura in order to unlock the potential of this beautiful variety even more. It was a very complicated process. It took five years of thinking and experiments to fully master the fermentation process. And this is exactly what happened with these beautiful nanolots. When we pick the cherries and then put them straight away into an eight degrees room, stopping the germination and preparing the cherries for the fermentation process. After that, cherries are popped and taken into a, into a bioreactor. And here, the magic happens. Andres inoculates the mosto coming from the previous geisha fermentation and a special natural yeast called Schizo Saccharomyces pombe. A complicated name for an amazing result in the cup. After that, the bioreactor is sealed. Oxygen is taken out and nitrogen is applied for 72 hours, developing the texture. It is a very precise recipe. And after tasting many experiments with higher temperature, achieving some floral notes, and lower temperature, <coughs> achieving some spiciness, we finally found that 26 degrees was a perfect environmental condition for the yeast to work efficiently with the coffee together, creating that new, refreshing, exciting melon quality that you had in your cup. For my milk beverage, I'm using three grams of geisha and 17 grams of katura for a total of 20 grams in. And 37 grams out, achieving a kick of intensity. I will add 60 ml of a freeze distilled cow's milk, having 5.5% of fat, thanks to the freeze distillation. I'm steaming this milk at 55 degrees because I wanted to highlight the balance with this coffee. The result is going to be, please write that down for me. A creamy texture and flavors of cantaloupe candy, papaya yogurt, white chocolate, and fior di latte ice cream. We talked about the fermentation process, right? But it doesn't stop there. In fact, after the fermentation, bioreactor is opened and cherries are taken, washed, and then dried under the sun for 15 days. Because we wanted the UVA lights to kill the bacteria, stopping the fermentation right where we want it to. Let's start from here for now. Enhancing the beautiful sweetness. Please enjoy because of the nitro fermentation. Roasting this coffee was a true challenge. In fact, we applied a soaking technique, preserving the fruitiness and highlighting the balance. Serian, please enjoy. With the geisha, instead, we roasted it 15 days ago with a total roast time of 10 minutes and 15 seconds and a development of 16%, approaching the first crack with higher energy and prolonging the Maya reaction in order to have the best structure for this blend today. Please enjoy. For this amazing coffee, I also needed a special milk. So three years ago, I started working with Simone, a crazy passionate dairy farmer coming from a small village in Italy. He has 42 Gersney cows, brown and white, producing an incredible seasonal milk that will pair perfectly with this coffee today. Please enjoy, Nina.
All right, ladies, if you're ready, let's move on. Let's go to the last course. Hey, judge, this is for you. You can take it backstage afterwards. In the cards in front of you, you can find all the ingredients about my signature drink, but just for now. I know it's summer, it's hot, so let's make a refreshing mocktail, starting with the first ingredient. Representing the fermentation, I made a homemade yogurt by mixing 200 ml of the milk from Simone with two grams of lactobacillus. And then I let them ferment for eight hours, having a lactic fermentation. After that, I added a fresh passion fruit juice that I made by squeezing two passion fruit in one liter of boiling water. Adding all of this together in the magnetic stirrer at 400 RPM for seven minutes in order to mix different consistency, I'm gonna add five CL and it will create a new flavor of guava. For my second ingredient, representing the maceration, fermentation is when bacteria consume the sugar within the coffee cherries. So to compensate the sugar loss, I made a homemade tonic water by cooking 10 grams of citric peels, like lime and lemon, in one liter of boiling water. Then I added one gram of saffron and one gram of pepper to enhance the freshness. Adding 6CL will create a new flavor of mandarin. And then, of course, two double espressos, representing 100% of Katura. Then I made with a recipe of 20 grams in and 38 grams out unlocking the full potential of this beautiful variety. The espresso, combined with all the other ingredients, will turn that watermelon you had before into a more watermelon candy. I'll be right back. All right. I just shaked for six seconds all the ingredients with my coffee because I wanted to achieve a serving temperature of 12 degrees. We found that this temperature was a perfect one to enhance all the flavors, unlocking even more the potential of this Katura with all the other ingredients. I'm gonna ask you to drink it in two different sips. The first one, please just enjoy the beautiful taste and the tactile. In the second one, you can look for flavor notes. But now, one more ingredient is missing. Timur berry pepper from Nepal. I aged this Timur berry pepper from Nepal in, for eight days in sealed barrels. After that, I boiled this pepper in one liter of boiling water for 10 minutes. I cool it down to make an infusion. And then, thanks to this former, I'm going to create micro-impulses, micro creating a sparkling citric acidity and the fizzy mouthfeel in a first sip. I'm gonna add this on top of your drink, and you will find, please write that down for me. In the first sip, sparkling citric acidity. And a fizzy mouthfeel, reminding of Orangina, or depending where you're from, Fanta. Second sip will be guava, mandarin, watermelon candy, and peach. I'm gonna ask you to take two sips, but just when I call my time, please. The first one from the foam, and the second one just turning the glass. There you go, just when I call my time, please. So judges, as a barista, my role is to unlock the full potential of coffee. And this was just the first experiment, and I can't wait to see how many more we can discover. I believe that in order to do it, we need to keep innovating and get rid of our old beliefs, time. All right, so let's give a big round of applause for Mr. Champion representing.